So the initial gold rush on Code Arena might be over guys. I um, hate to say it, but recently, just in the last couple of months, I've seen a massive increase in the amount of competition on this platform, which has directly resulted in the payouts for high severity, medium severity, and uh, hell, even a QA and gas optimization reports. All the rewards have been uh, pretty diluted now. Um, it's quite noticeable now, uh, especially in some of the most recent competitions. I've been uh, doing auto contests on Code Arena for uh, just over three months now. I got my first uh, high severity, uh, first couple of high severity findings. They were pretty big payouts. I got a 3K one pretty early on. And since then, I've found more findings. I found three or four more high severity findings after that and four or five mediums within these uh, couple of months. But uh, none of the recent payouts have been uh, really that close. They weren't close to the amount of rewards I was getting for those earlier submissions, which really makes me wish I uh, really found out about this platform a bit earlier and maybe give it uh, a bit more go when I first heard about it, I think back in uh, March uh, of this year. I've seen some people comment uh, that uh, my videos have motivated them to join the platform. So it's probably in part um, because of my videos uh, with the recent increase in competition, but it's all good. Um, I am making these videos mostly uh, to just share my journey and what I'm learning. So I'm glad to be uh, providing a value for you guys and uh, motivating you guys to uh, learn new things and um, start on this uh, bug hunting journey in Web3 uh, because it's a super new field. Um, even if, say, uh, Code Arena, it isn't as good as it was before due to uh, more competition and the rewards being uh, diluted a bit. I think Web3 is still going to be the uh, the field where there's you're going to get more bang for your buck if you are studying Web3 security because as a whole I think uh, Web3 is still a massively undervalued in the infosec community uh, just because uh, you can see on Twitter, um, Infosec Twitter, if you follow that, um, everyone on Infosec seems to just keep shitting on Web3 and Web3 security in general because there's a lot of scams, which is uh, which the criticism is legitimate. But um, I think a lot of them are failing to see uh, the opportunity that is in Web3 bug bounties and security um, moving forward. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen recently, uh, there was some massive payouts um, in Immunify. So I think that might be the long game in Web3 um, if you want to continue on Code Arena and um, keep up the uh, learning progress in this. Uh, the long game would be, I think, getting some of those uh, massive 1 million plus uh, bug bounties on Immunify. So there was a 1 million payout just, uh, uh, I think yesterday, uh, Poning.eth, he, he got a 6 million a couple of months ago and then another 1 million payout um, just yesterday. So pretty crazy stuff, uh, the record breaking bounties never seen before in the, in traditional, uh, in the traditional bug bounty space. So um, a lot of opportunity uh, in the long game here. Um, so I think if you're looking at Code Arena, uh, whether it's still worth uh, getting into this and now that the rewards are a bit diluted um, you you sort of have to play the long game i think um, if you want to get into it now um, but even so uh, even with that said with the rewards not being as good as it used to be uh, for for people who are living in uh, some low income countries uh, you can still very easily make a living on code arena and it doesn't get it doesn't take that much to um, get into it and get some payouts uh, just because of how it's structured, right? So uh, let me just jump in the docs and then uh, we will be able to see what makes a code arena pretty unique when it comes to uh, comparing to like traditional uh, bug bounties. So code arena is an audit contest. So essentially you get guaranteed payouts 
and low hanging fruit because every project, uh, a code base is new. Um, every round that they do is with a new code base. And there's a lot of low hanging fruits in those uh, code bases that you can get some very easy uh, payouts for some gas optimization and uh, QA issues, which was how I sort of got started in this whole space. If you look back in uh, some of my uh, previous videos talking about Code Arena, um, I first started just uh, submitting only QA and gas optimization reports and slowly pretty much learn from there. And it doesn't take that long for you to um, get your head around this if you already have an IT uh, or a security background. And uh, because of how this is organized, like the payouts are guaranteed if you find a bug, um, the payout is shared between the people who find it. So if you've got two people finding the same bug, your payout will be slashed by half because it'll be shared between the two people. Um, that's why the rewards have been uh, getting diluted recently because more people are finding those same bugs. Now, because of um, the way that it's set up and all the reports being public, it makes it a really good learning resource. And I think it's kind of a double-edged sword here where you've got the rewards not being as high as it used to be, but the reports are getting more and more high quality and more worth learning from. Now, I've pretty much skimmed, at least skimmed through all of these reports. I haven't understood every single report in um, great detail, but I've skimmed through all the reports and my general thoughts are that the earlier reports are, are much less high quality compared to some of the more recent reports. And you've got uh, projects that are going to a traditional um, audit uh, companies, uh, they're not finding bugs, they come to Code Arena, they find bugs. So Code Arena is sort of like this place where there's a great um, mixing pot full of experienced and new auditors and they're all sharing their ideas and everyone's growing from each other. The Discord is super active with uh, some of the more experienced auditors, um, you know, spending time answering uh, even the most basic questions from newbies and everyone's so friendly, like it's a super uh, awesome place to learn security. So I think for the long game, um, I am going to be, uh, I plan to keep on participating in Code Arena contests and reading these reports and uh, just keep uh, gaining more knowledge in this field uh, just for the long game because I think Web3 security is uh, going to really blow up and uh, kind of take over uh, the bug bounty space uh, moving forward uh, because of just how how big the bounties are that are available um, in the space. It's uh, You can't really find it uh, anywhere else. So if we jump over to the leaderboard, um, you'll get an idea of why the rewards have been uh, diluted a lot. So I started around three months ago and I had my first high severity finding just in I think a month and a half or so and that was 3k and in total I've got 6.7k now. Five highs and four mediums. Um, the, the recent findings they really haven't been paying out that much at all. Um, previously, I mean if you started all the way back when Code Arena first started. Like medium severity findings, they were getting a good amount of money for medium severities, even like between five to a thousand dollars. And for highs, they're definitely, you're gonna get more than a thousand dollars if you find a high severity. But nowadays when you're getting around a hundred wardens per competition, some of the more recent uh, findings I've got, it's less than $100 per high and medium. So the payout recently for me really hasn't been that great. If you look at the 60 day leaderboard for me, I'm rank 50, but it's only $700 and this included two high severity findings. So yeah, really uh, the pay isn't really comparable to what it used to be, but like I said, double-edged sword, you get 
more learning opportunities now that the reports are much more high quality and the discord channel is more active than ever it's super active with people asking solidity questions security questions um, anything that um, you know helps people learn more in this space uh, experienced auditors are spending time and answering those questions and helping people out so I think you sort of have to play the long game here and currently I feel there is a bigger gap of knowledge in terms of where I'm at and where the most experienced auditors are that are on the leaderboard. It's going to take some time for me to uh, catch up to where they are and it's probably going to take years I reckon to uh, be where they are at but I think it's going to be worth it in the long term if you stick with it. And in the short term, um, the rewards aren't that great, like I mentioned, but I, I think I have a couple of ideas of how um, I will approach this in the future. So at the moment, I am finding low hanging fruit bugs and bugs that are mostly uh, sort of contained within one function or thereabouts. Um, the issue that I am having trouble with is trying to find uh, bugs that relate to a uh, business logic that is more sort of uh, around how the whole project works as a whole and I think that really is going to come down to getting exposed to more projects and trying to go through the understanding and inner workings of them and uh, just more exposure is going to be helping in that regard and that's going to be uh, that's going to take a while and uh, hopefully um, I will have the patience to stick through that and uh, keep grinding uh, through this whole process. Um, the other thing that I am thinking about is actually to write up a script to automatically do a QA and gas optimization reports because reading some of the most recent reports I do have a funny feeling that some of or a lot of the high ranking QA and gas optimization reports have been written by either a modified version of Slither or Soul Hint. So uh, for example, um, if we pull up the Discord channel, there was some funny banter going on here that people were noticing some of these uh, QA and gas optimization reports were very bot-like. A judge made this comment for this uh, QA optimization report. Agree with the findings, although this feels like a bot wrote this. And if you read through this report, for example, this one, inconsistent spacing in the comments. Some lines use the space, some lines don't. Do you seriously expect an experienced warden to be wasting time and counting spaces between these comments? Um, it's 100% written by a script, and I'm just trying to think of what is the best way to achieve this at the moment. One option is to use Slither because you can write automated detection rules around this. And the other one that I uh, found mentioned by a warden um, in this chat is Soul Hint. So here this guy says uh, you can do this with Slither or Soul Hint. I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking into Soul Hint a bit more. I looked at the repo briefly yesterday. It seems to be a Solidity parser where you can write your automated detection rules around it to uh, generate findings. A uh, slither, you have to compile it, and salt hint is just a parser, so you just parse the thing. It's a bit more lightweight, so um, I think it'll be quite useful in generating uh, these uh, QA reports and the gas optimization reports because pretty much all you need to generate these reports is a parser, right? And if you write up a parser to be able to find all of these. Uh, rules uh, set up your rules uh, generate these reports in like five minutes each competition there's good money in this um, the guy who I suspect is has already set up a script to do this 
he is ranking like top one, uh, one to two ranked every single time uh, for these QA and guess optimization reports. And they're worth like between 400 to a thousand dollars in total for each of these order contests. So very much worth setting up um, something like this. So uh, I'm gonna be looking into this and um, see if I can set something up like this. Um, tools that is going to be uh, built around automation. There's a lot of automation tooling in Web2 bug bounties if you are familiar with that. And this is pretty much just the first iteration of starting to build some automation around these uh, Web3 uh, bug bounties. So uh, pretty excited to uh, jump into that and uh, look into that a bit deeper and see um, what I can do with that. And I'll definitely share um, what I find um, as well. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna uh, be sharing all my rules that I write, because I think that'll be like giving up a bit too much of my secrets, but I will share um, how um, I'm gonna be approaching this and uh, sharing the results um, of those efforts. So um, that's uh, pretty much what I'm gonna be working towards next, I think, around Code Arena. For medium and highs, there's no way really around it. There's just gonna be, you're just gonna have to do more order contest and just um, learn from getting exposed to uh, more code bases, reading more reports. There's no shortcut to this and there's no magic either. It's just gonna be a long grind. But for the long term, the long game in all of this is going to be those massive bounties on Immunify. Um, that's probably uh, my long-term goal. Um, hopefully if I get that, uh, get a million dollar bug bounty in, uh, in a couple of years, uh, we can look back into this video. That'll be pretty cool. So if we have a look at C. Michelle's blog post here of tracking his stats on Code Arena, he was averaging around $2,000 an hour on Code Arena and recently dropped to around $500 an hour. So around this point, I think for him, his time is not gonna be worth less than this. So he's sort of dropped off on Code Arena recently, I think to other bug bounty platforms such as Immunify and also Sparebit, which was another interesting one that I saw recently. So Sparebit is another DAO, sort of like Code Arena, but you have to apply to join them and then they, um, they generate order reports pretty much the same as Code Arena once you join the team. And I've actually seen C. Michelle's name on some of the more recent reports from Sparebit. So I think at this point when you're near the top of your game, um, it'll be worthwhile to move on to other platforms. But until then, Code Arena is still the best platform to learn and sort of catch up to uh, some of these guys who's been in the game for uh, years. So if you're thinking whether it's still worth it to join Code Arena, it's worth it if you are a beginner, if you are mid-level, but if you are pretty much the top of the leaderboard, which most of the people who are watching this video probably aren't, then it's still gonna be worthwhile joining Code Arena just for the learning opportunities and some of that sweet bug bounty as a sort of motivation for you to uh, keep participating in these order contests. So that's my Code Arena update and what I have been up to for the last two weeks. Uh, hopefully I will be making more progress in this soon and be sharing my results uh, on this channel.